right. Hey, welcome aboard to the Reach Keep podcast. It is good to have you with us. Uh, we are in studio here today. This is Mike Holmes here, uh, Sinclair Baptist, the founding pastor. Want to spend some time talking with you about this concept we've covered the last several weeks, and this is the idea of what we call the preparation environment and the importance of it. Now, we have had a couple podcasts in the past here uh, that we have dealt with. In fact, I wanted to bring a couple of them up here uh, just so make sure that you kind of get those but this is the secret in other words if if someone was voting for your church why would they vote for you okay we're very much into kind of the voting and what's it all about and in fact some of the old uh, politicians that kind of talk about election season and all that they have a little saying that says um, it, it, I don't really care for the saying. You probably don't either. But they say it's the economy, stupid. Okay. In other words, it always comes back to one thing. It's you know for the incumbent, the person who is the president, it's all about the economy. And they kind of say it's the economy, stupid. They kind of like make you like duh, like don't miss it. It's so in your face that you can miss it. And in church work, we have something kind of similar. And I I work with a lot of churches very focused on their preaching, very focused on their music, very focused on their outreach and some of their doctrine. And and those are all great and important topics, and they have to be there. And the gospel has to be preeminent. In other words, we have to have that happen. But People come to church for a lot of different reasons, and it's, uh, uh, you know, to say it's the economy, stupid, that doesn't quite work because economy and church is not quite the right word. But really, let me just change and give you another E word here. It is the environment, okay? I won't call you stupid, all right? Okay, but it is the environment of the church, which would entail the, the doctrine and the, you know, the preaching and some of those things. And if you don't have, a, you know, if you're not solving problems, if you're not seeing people come to the Lord and seeing, you know, revival and developing people and, you know, feeding the flock of God, then, hey, you're missing the boat, okay? But when people come, they are coming, if, if they're, they're walking into an environment of your church, and it needs to be, as we have emphasized the last several weeks, one of these things, when they walk in and it is an unprepared place, in other words, you know, you weren't ready for them, and the, the heater's not on, or the air conditioner's not on, and someone's like, oh, we better turn the lights on quick, and, you know, that type of stuff. Those things uh, count against you, okay? And I know it shouldn't be that way. And I'm not talking about good church folk. The regular good church folk, they're going to be there if there's electricity or not. They're going to be there. You know, if a bomb went off, people would still be at church Sunday morning, have their Bible ready to go. I mean, they would they would be there. But we're talking about new people and reaching new young families here, you know, at Reach Keep. That's what we focus on. And people come because of the environment. There's something there. And again, it doesn't have to be this super spicy, uh, you know, rock and roll kind of environment. I'm not, uh, not into all that kind of stuff, but it cannot be an unprepared environment. And uh, we, we've spent the last several weeks going through a couple different things. And I wanted to bring a couple of these up for you. Um, just the, the idea here. Uh, let's just jump back to uh, the one here with Eric. Uh, we did an interview a few weeks back here of uh, called The Rescue of an Almost Closed Church, and you need to watch this. This, is, this guy has got the environment thing down pat. Now, he's an older pastor, been around for a while, but he was in a church plant situation, and uh, you'll have to listen to the whole story. But he moved to a church that was just about gone, okay? And I've been down to that church many times over the years and know there's some good people there, and there's solid and all that, but just because of health reasons and economy and different things, it was just about gone, and Eric mastered the environment, okay, uh, of what it was all about. Now, I've heard him speak. It does a fine job there, uh, but he's no Charles Spurgeon, okay? He's no, you know, all these people, you know, like, it's, it doesn't have to be fire in the pulpit. You don't have to be Billy Sunday or whatever, but people are coming in and they're paying attention, you know, to the, is it is it clean? Is it sharp? Are they ready? Were the lights on? Is the grass cut? Is a snow shoveled from the sidewalk? And all of those kind of things. 
things shout so much louder when it comes to reaching new people and keeping those people and then having those people want to get involved. There's one thing about, you know, getting them to come to a couple services, but when they say, hey, I want to I want to give, I want to volunteer, I want to tell my friends about this church, and then, you know, you are this environment where the seed lands and it grows, and that is such a powerful, powerful thing. And this one, the rescue of an almost closed church was, was uh, just a powerful thing there that uh, Eric did. Then we did this thing, and we kind of summarized some of this, it, what we call unprepared church equals shrinking church. And this is where we kind of took it down. A lot of things that Eric said in that interview, and we boiled it down to about an eight or nine minute podcast and just some real practical things uh, that were there. And then I had one more that we did, and let me see if I get to this one here, okay? And this is the idea of the, the vibrant church, and if, you are vi- if you're vibrate, in other words, there's the right kind of motion going on, and we dealt with some of the same type of things, kind of kept it short and kind of simple. Now, I, after listening to some of this and getting feedback and talking to some other pastors, and I do this online coaching, as you know, uh, spend some time, I, I wanted to take some time and kind of dive into this and give you some more practical things. The, the last one here, avoiding the non-vibrant thing, was some real practical things that the pastor can do actually just during the sermon. In other words, there's, it has nothing to do with your content, but ways that you would announce things, way that you would set things up that people would go, oh, I'm coming back for that, you know. Uh, that's what that one is all about. This one is really dealing with, you know, it's the economy stupid kind of a thing. It's sort of bringing it all together for you. And I hope that this is a good summary. And if this is helpful for you, uh, do me a favor, hit the like button and some of that. But please uh, subscribe if you've never subscribed to our podcast here, the Reach Keep uh, podcast. Uh, it's actually the Better Sundays podcast, what we call it. But this is sort of our longer format one here. But I want to talk about this idea of the preparation environment. And I want to kind of, you know, give you, again, some real practical things that you can do. Kind of give you a little sort of the philosophy of what it means, but then just like, all right, here's something you can do this Sunday, this week. Okay, and a lot of these things are done during the week as opposed to during, you know, actually on a Sunday. So the preparation environment, I mean, we can reword this as sort of my little lingo there, the preparation environment, but this would be kind of like the, the we care for you environment. You know, you walk into a place and it's like, we care for you. Have you ever been to a hotel where it's like you were the last thing that they wanted to walk in the door, you know, and they're back and they're, they're not even ready to check you in and the rooms are dirty and all that kind of stuff. You're not going back. That's the bottom line. That's what we're talking about. We want to be the opposite opposite of that. We want to be the we care for you uh, type of environment here. Um, you're important to us. You know, what's important to you is important to me. Very good uh, little kind of a concept there. You might have, uh, you know, picked that up from uh, the seven habits of excellent people or whatever that's called um, Stephen Covey's book. Uh, but that's a really good concept there is what is important to you is important to me and creating this environment where people are important. Children are important people in wheelchairs are important people that can't hear very good are important you know all you, you're really paying attention to that and we're going to get into this with a, a little a word I invented peopleizing okay we'll give you that in just a little bit um, but this rewording you know we love your kids you know making that just sort of very prominent as it comes out so uh, the opposites of this are like I, I don't care you know I'm a nobody uh, you know the people it's just a selfish church I, I don't think people would kind of say that probably it's just a selfish church, but you would pick that up that they were all about themselves. They were very insider uh, focused. All the conversation kind of turned back to them rather than turn to you, uh, that type of stuff. So what we want to use is this idea of what we call conscientious forethought conscientious forethought. I have a sign on my wall. In fact, let me I talk about preparation and environment. I'm going to just pull this off the wall here for you. Hang on. There it is. <clears throat> this is something that 
I keep, and I have taught on this so many different times, this idea of being just really thinking ahead. And the forethought is the, the thinking ahead part, but the conscientious where you're thinking of somebody else, you're not thinking of yourself. And that's really where we're going with all this, this idea of really preparing and thinking ahead. We care for you. We're here for you, uh, that type of thing. In fact, we have uh, some shirts that we did once at our church. We'll see if I can find a picture and put them up for you. Um, but it says, we're here for you. And that was just a powerful, powerful t set of shirts that we did. Uh, we had an I Love My Church thing. But if people are going to, you know, vote for your church, all right? In other words, they're, they're going to like, that's my church, or hey, go to that church, and that's a good one. You're going to have all of this stuff be on top of these things and be really ready to go. Now, I want to kind of give you sort of the, the, the philosophy of it here, and then I'm going to give you just some practical stuff that what you can, you can actually, actually kind of pull it together, uh, the idea here. So we don't want to miss the boat on this thing. We want to get on it. So uh, it's an environment of, and here's the first one I have, uh, and, and it's the idea of vision, okay? Vision means knowing where you're going. Now, I don't know where you live, but out where we live, lots of times there's people on the side of the road with a piece of cardboard, and they're kind of hitchhiking. They're trying to get to the next town, and it's 100 miles to everything around here. So they usually have a t name of the town, you know, you know, this way or that way, Salt Lake, Denver, whatever. And they will put up a, a cardboard thing, hold it up. And because they're trying to get somebody that's going the same direction, the reason they're on that road or on that entrance ramp to an interstate there is because you are going that way and they know you're going that way. And this is the idea here that this environment that you create in your local church, and it's created through, again, good preaching and good music and all that, but you are on top of it and you have a vision and you know what is going on. Now, I'll boil that down to something simple that you can do um, every week here in just a minute. But this idea that you are a, a, and you don't have to, I don't mean like visionary, like, ooh, you know, you're out there and, you know, seeing trances and, you know, 600 foot tall Jesus and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you know the port that your ship is going to. In other words, our church is going this direction. And that is very evident to everybody that as the leader, you have got the, the, the ship pointed the right direction. You're in charge and you're moving along and you got a good crew with you and we're going somewhere. Okay. If you don't know, you know, where you're going with your boat. I mean, you sail out into the ocean. I mean, it's like, what good is that? All right. You're just kind of sailing around. When I was a kid, we had a sailboat, a little, little kind of sunfish thing that they called it. I mean, it's about the size of this room here, about 12 feet long, little bitty thing. And we would go out and sail around and we would just you need, you need, you need go around because it was kind of fun. All right. Just to go out there and we'd tip the boat over because it was more fun tipping it over and having fun with it than it was actually sailing. And it was always so hot that you get in the water that way. Way. we weren't really going anywhere we were just out there having fun and a lot of churches there is not a vision of what they're really doing now you may have theological vision okay we're going to win the loss we're going to disciple people we're going to love our community i mean and, and almost every church has a mission statement and they have a doctrinal statement that says our purpose is this but if that is not evident in your announcements, in your weekly activities, in your sermons, if it is not evident that you're doing that, then you're just like me and my little boat when I was a kid, just sailing around out in the ocean, having a good time. Okay, and I'm not, I don't want to be critical here, but there are a lot of churches that have fallen into routinism and ritualism where they're doing exactly the same thing all the time. And it's got a better, bigger core at the back of it there somewhere, going to all the world and reach people. But because Sundays come every week and Wednesdays come every week, we've kind of had a routine, not routine 
routinize some things, bring them down to where they're just real simple and, and that we have lost the port, okay? We don't really know what's going on. We've kind of, we're not, we're missing, people are missing the boat. In other words, people come, they're just not like, they don't know where you're going. They don't really know what's up. Okay, so there's a, a way to fix this, and I'll give you that in just a second. So this is this idea of vision and knowing where you're going. Now, the second one here um, that I have uh, for the, the environment, stupid, okay, and I didn't mean to say it personally there. Don't take it that way. All right, but uh, the second thing is that there is a... a, a at what we call activation excellence. In other words, you guys are doing things on purpose, okay? There's the vision is there, but now everybody is doing their part and there's no spinning wheels. There's no, like people just always doing the same thing because they've always done the same thing. This is what we call activation excellence. You're doing the right things. Now, many churches are like pinball machines. I know there's a lot of motion. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, we used to play, and for some of you younger people, okay, that are hooked on video games, let me just say something. Video is very cool, but nothing like the real McCoy, which is a little ball bouncing around up in there okay you got to go find a real pinball machine someday and all god's people said amen so you can tell what era i was raised in so all right pinball is the ball is just going all over the place and it's bang 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 bang. it's not really going anywhere but it's sure making a lot of motion and a lot of noise and there are many churches that are like that and that is not activation excellence that is the idea of of of, of just doing what you've always done and, and just kind of getting there. You need to make sure that you are doing the right things and, and that you have the discernment there to like say, this is not working anymore. Okay, things are different. So we're going to tweak this. Okay, and this doesn't work. So we're going to tweak this. And you really come up with this idea of these are the right things that we are doing. And th this is, again, this will be in your environment. This will be, this will ooze out because you'll, people go, wow, look what they're doing at that church. That other church has a, let, let me give you an example. I have a, many churches that have, um, you know, like a door knocking or a visitation type program. And they started it, you know, 40 years ago. And it's every Tuesday night or Thursday night or Saturday morning, whenever it happens to be. And it it's basically doesn't work anymore because they're not working it the right way and they're not actually you know so pe a few people show up and they kind of do it but they don't want to drop the program because they've always had it and if we drop visitation oh we're good no it's, it's not dropping visitation it's modifying visitation it's figuring out how to make contacts during the week and then getting to those people and talking to them about the lord and winning them to the lord i'm for going out and doing all that kind of stuff but there are many many ways and if you hang around reach keep here long enough or if you get in one of our coaching things we will help you figure out how to get contact information from people and how to have quality visits with them and how to lead people to the lord in that type of environment so i'm just saying that that sometimes we have the same program over and over and over and a church with a good environment that I'm talking about, this participation environment where it just like smells like growth, okay, is because you have focused on doing the right things, okay, things that have merit, okay, and, and you have this idea of like, that's not going to work anymore, we're going to do this, okay, that's not working anymore, we're going to do this, and you have the flexibility to do this. Um, if you ever get a chance to, to read Read a, a good book on dealing with kind of the the how people work and how things flow, and it fits. It's it is a secular book, but it really will be enlightening to you. It's called the the Six Geniuses of Work, and it's by Patrick Lencioni, and he really kind of deals with this ideal the. The, the sort of the big picture of it here is that he deals with like how work gets done. In other words, some people think of the job and then there's other people that do the job. Okay. But there's a, a set of people in the middle 
and this is where you need to be, Pastor, that says, okay, it's not just like you think of it and create it, and then these people do it over here. It's like, are we doing the right stuff? In other words, is there merit to this? Is this a workable thing? Is this something that's going to get us where we want to go? Churches have a lot of people that are in the final category of, of uh, Lencioni's book there. And this is the idea of they, they are tenacious and they just implement things and get it done. So if a pastor says, hey, run a VBS, they're like, but we got it. Okay, you know, run a Sunday school, we got it. We can make that happen. We're doing an outreach program, we got it. And you got all sorts of tenacity and people that are kind of getting the job done, but they're they're running and doing all this thing, but it's really not necessarily a workable thing. And the pastor needs to be, and you may not necessarily be the visionary that kind of like cooks up the ideas and sort of sees the need out there, what needs to happen, and hopefully you're balanced and have all all these things, but but you need to make sure that somewhere in there that there is this discernment, this idea of like this is workable, okay, this is a good idea, and then like tell be able to kind of gather the folks and say, We're gonna do this, okay? And the we're gonna do this is different than uh, actually doing it, okay? It's it's giving them the vision, okay? So as I just spoke about vision, but but it's giving them a workable vision, a practical thing that is going to really help them reach out and do stuff. And then you turn the people loose, okay, and they get into the, you know, finish the job and implement it and make all the, the, the magic happen, so to speak. But this is the idea. And if we're back into... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, back into the boat mode here. You know, I said, don't miss the boat, okay? Uh, the, the first one there was, you know, knowing your port. I mean, in other words, where you're going. This would be kind of like the steering of the ship. This would be, you got the hand on the rudder and there's a storm coming and you know how to navigate around it or you need to work your way into the bay or whatever. But you are have the hand on the rudder and you're more steering the ship. And this is such an important thing. And this this smells, okay? This smells good. When people see that you're doing new and different things that are outreach, uh, that, that they're touching people, that are discipling people, they can they can feel it when they come in. And this is part of that, the environment, stupid type of thing. They come in, it, it'd be like right now, our uh, community, I wouldn't say community, our entire nation um, is caught up in this inflation thing. And it's sort of, you know, it, it's hit us all, okay? And everything costs more, and it's just kind of everywhere. And no matter where you go, it's kind of the topic, all right? That's sort of the economy stupid type of thinking. This, if you flip this, this is the environment stupid type of thing, is where people come in and they go, oh, yeah, this is good. This is going a good direction rather than, ooh, inflation, <laughs> that's a bad direction. This is a good thing. And you you can see the vision. So when you want a preparation environment, you are going to, as the pastor, have these practical, and I'll give you the practical stuff here in a sec, but you're going to have these things that kind of oozing out. The vision is going to be there, and it's the vision of the right stuff, okay? It's that idea of, of making sure you are, you know, going up, the climbing the right ladder. You're on the right path. You're doing the right uh, the right tasks there. So that is the, the second one there, and that's steering the ship. And the last one is kind of this idea of what I call peopleization, okay? It is, and if we're sticking with the ship crew, this would be the, the mastery of your crew, okay? Not like the dictatorship of your crew, but the mastery. In other words, you're the master of, of the crew, okay? And the, the guy in charge, if you're the senior pastor, most churches, that's kind of the way it's working here. You kind of like the leader there, but you also have a mastery. In other words, you know that this guy is good at this and this person is good at this and that gal is good at there and this family will do this and you are in touch with those people you have the people skills to make it all happen and you if, if there's anything that pastors need to work on probably more and more it's this idea of be getting good with their people and taking time to listen taking time to talk being thoughtful sending a text here and there how you doing this relationship building we've covered some of this just recently in some of our uh, podcasts you can go back a little bit about the pastor 
leader and the relationship here. But people are going to vote for you if they like you. And this is that concept of the know, like, and trust. They need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you. Now, the like thing, don't go crazy on that because, you know, buy everybody ice cream, man, they'll like you. Okay, but that's not a good way to run a church. All right, it's not all about being liked, but you need to be likable. Okay, you need to be making sure that you are not caustic, not short with people, not like, you know, don't have time for people, that type of stuff, but you are likable. Probably if you ever met a politician personally, okay, in other words, like stood in a line and they went by and you shook their hand, it's like, you know, you could see their smile, you could see their demeanor, they kind of look you in the eye, nice to meet you, you know, maybe you went to a political rally where they kind of, you know, answered some questions and you begin to actually like that person, you probably then voted for that person. When I was a little bitty boy, I grew up in Kansas City area uh, nearby, and when I was probably in kindergarten, I would guess, or first grade, that, that I was over at my friend's house, a guy named Charlie Campbell, and his dad hollered down, we were playing in the basement, playing army men or something, and he said, hey boys, boys, come up here, <clears throat> you need to meet our next senator. And we went upstairs, and it was a guy named Bob Dole. And if you've been around politics, you've probably heard the name, Bob Dole, famous senator from Kansas. He ran for president at one time as well. But he was the main Kansas senator for a long time. How he was connected to this Charlie Campbell's dad, I have no idea. Maybe they went to school together. Uh, but for some reason, Bob Dole walked in the house by himself. I was a little boy. We walked up upstairs. It's like, okay, nice to meet you. You know, we shook hands or, you know, whatever. And we left and all that. The rest of my life, every time I had an opportunity, I voted for Bob Dole because I had met him, okay? And I didn't really even know him. I was too young for politics at that stuff. But I always remember meeting Mr. Dole. And because I met him and kind of knew him a little bit, I liked him and I voted for him. And pastor people are voting for you. They're voting for your church. And this idea of peopleizing and having a, the mastery of your crew, making sure you have done all the different things there to, to, to know how they work and whatever. And again, it's not all about being liked, but it is being, it is making sure that you are a people person and in charge of that. So let me give you the practical stuff here because we, we like to do that here. I wanted to spend some time with you on this. But a, a way that your vision stuff, a way that you can make this happen, okay, is with what we would call just good calendar skills. Work on good calendar skills. Now, this is the idea that you're looking out ahead and then you're getting that on a calendar. Now, whether you do the Google calendar thing or you put it into your phone and then it transfers to your computer or you have a big master calendar and you draw it on the wall or whatever, but all of these things are going to, as you calendar, you are going to be kind of doing some of that, you know, vision, like where are we going? I mean, if you're going to have like, say, a missions conference, you're going to have a, a revival meeting or an evangelistic meeting and you're like putting it on the calendar, you kind of have to ask the question is like, do we need, like, here's a, a good one. Some churches have revival meetings, okay, and some people have evangelistic meetings. Now, I think there's kind of a difference there. To me, one is much more about outreach, and the other one is about kind of like getting us all right with God, okay? I think there's probably need for both of that at some level. But your church, probably right now, you're thinking, wow, we need that one, or we need that one. And when would the best time to do that? As you're doing that, you're developing vision. And as you talk about those things and get those things out there in front of people, that becomes part of the environment. They, they smell that. They see that. You're excited for that meeting that's coming up. You're excited for that mission or you're excited for that whatever it happens to be. So this idea of developing 
these calendar skills and trying to make that uh, a little bit more prominent uh, as you talk. So what this means is as you are preaching, okay, and this is one of the things we talked about uh, in the avoiding the non-vibrant church, okay, is kind of the things that pastors can do in the sermon. Make sure you go back and watch that one. But as you are doing that, good calendar skills would, would be partway through your message you say, and by the way, you know, where Paul says here we need to, you know, be revived or grow or whatever, we have a great opportunity for growth. In fact, coming up in next September, we're going to have this discipleship conference, and we're all going to learn how to blah, 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 whatever it happens to be. And you would do that right in the middle of your message because it is oozing out of you, and people go, wow, they're thinking ahead. They got a discipleship thing coming up in three months from now. That's really cool. I like this church. I want to tell people about it. I want to invest. I want to give. I want to volunteer because they are on top of things. So this is the idea of getting good with calendar skills. This means pre-planning your your preaching calendar. Uh, we have a, a video we have done on our how to develop a preaching calendar. I'll try to put a link to it in the notes here and go back. But if you would like some coaching on this, we have done this before with a lot of guys. Help them develop, you know, think it all through. Where are we going and what are we talking about? And whether you're an expositor and go book by book and verse by verse or you're a topical guy, you still need to ask that question. What to my people need to eat, okay? I'm supposed to feed the flock of God, and sheep eat different things at different times of the year, okay? I come from the sheep background, and I can tell you that they don't just eat grass all the time or hay all the time. There's different times when they are having their babies, and right before they have their babies, you feed them differently. Once they've had their, their, their uh, little ones, you're feeding them a different thing there. There's kind of a time when you're getting ready to breed them, that uh, that you give them a whole bunch of different things. It's called flushing. It kind of helps them to ovulate a little bit better and to have, uh, you know, more twins and triplets, which is in the sheep business, is something that's very important. And so you feed them differently at that time. So they don't just eat the same thing all the time. And so you need to really kind of think that through. And that would be your vision kind of coming out in your calendar skills. So work on a calendar. Make sure if if you have not figured out how to connect your your phone, okay, most of you have some type of smartphone. Um, get your phone connected to your calendar, connected to your secretary if you have one there. But just sit down and kind of go, where are we going with things? And if you'd like some help with that coaching, um, you can contact us at uh, info at reachkeep.com. I'd be happy uh, to even just kind of give you a regular phone call and just sit down and kind of give you the basics on how to develop a preaching calendar. Okay, it's not just the preaching calendar, though, but it's the activity calendar that's out there, too, because preaching calendar would be like we're going to be old testament book here new testament book here topic here marriage here relationships here you know controversial things we're going to talk about you know different you know tough topics here but the church calendar would also have things like men's retreats and vacation Bible schools and all the things like that. And those need to ooze right out of your preaching as well. And that would be like, hey, we're having a men's retreat and you need to be here and this is what we're doing. And that when you start talking about that stuff, it comes out, people go, wow, I like it boom, I'm investing, I'm coming, I'm volunteering. Okay, so good calendar skills ties to that vision concept. The, the second one that I mentioned was this idea of activation excellence, and this is where you really have the discernment. You know kind of what you're working on. And this is something that will take place in your meetings. You need to learn to have good meetings and not hate meetings, but love meetings. And meetings where you actually, you know, are meeting with the right people about the right topics at the right time and getting the right 
things done. Okay. I, sometimes we call them a working. Okay. And now we're, we're just going to stop meeting here for a minute. We're going to work for a little bit. And we've had many times when I've met with my staff and we've kind of talked about, we want to do something. And I said, you know, tell you what, let's just spend the next 15 minutes. Each of us grab your laptop, grab your phone, whatever, research, whatever it is. Let's reconvene in about 15 minutes and let's see if we can kind of figure this out. You work on, if we need envelopes for this and you work on, you know, calendar dates for this and you work on some topic for some of that stuff. And, and you see if we can, you know, get, get the, into the public school system here and get the calendars and let's get things coordinated. You work on the calendars. I'll work on this and let's see what we can come up with. And you spend 15 minutes, boom, and then you come back together and you go, all right, here, let's get some things done. Um, we have excellent meetings at our church. We have had in, in times past probably some of the best, best ever meetings I've ever worked with in a church at ours because we've been able to bat some of these ideas around and then actually just kind of dive in and try to get some things done. But activation and knowing what's going on and then being able to kind of like go, okay, let's put the brakes on that a little bit because I don't think that's going to work. And let's try this over here. I think this is going to work better, okay, what we're going to do here. So this is the idea of discerning and is this workable and kind of figuring that out. But that will come through your meetings. And if you are if you have just regular what we would call governance meetings, okay, and every church has a set of pretty much much standard meetings that happen all the time you got to meet with trustees you got to meet with either deacons or elders or leadership people whatever it were is at your particular church and many times those are like once a month or every other tuesday and you know you've got a kind of a thing there that is what is called a governance meeting and in governance meetings you deal with great big important topics. I mean, you know, there's legal things you have to deal with and major personnel issues and major budget or major calendar type of things. But pastor, please meet with your children and your teen people and your nursery people and meet with them and gather ideas there too and figure out how you can do things better. And is this workable or is that not workable? You know, figuring all that stuff out. So there are many, many kinds Kinds of meetings that you can go to. Uh, if you go to our uh, website, and I wouldn't say our website, go to, um, let's see, go to Reach Keep, uh, the, the YouTube channel. Go to our YouTube channel, and I think if you type in uh, in the search bar there when you're doing uh, Reach Keep, type in meeting, and you're going to find some of the meetings that we have. I will try to link some of the main ones uh, on there. Um, make a mark here so I remember to do that. We will g- get you some links for this, but meetings is so important. So if you are going to be oozing the right things with your environment, okay, oozing out the right things, you know, uh, so people are going to vote for you all right they're going to follow you they're going to you know go after you you're going to be work on the calendar skills and some of that vision stuff and then work on this implementation uh, or or activation stuff uh, and really get good at that and get good serious kind of meetings okay where you're really working on some of those things and hammering things out and getting stuff done got a good agenda you know where you're going got the right people at the meeting that type of thing so now the last one here <clears throat> the last one is what i call peopleizing okay the peopleization okay it's where you would really get good at the people stuff now there are many many ways to do this and i would go back and listen to a couple of the relationship podcasts we just did uh probably two months ago they should be not too far back if you're looking in the feed there on youtube on our uh youtube channel okay but this is the idea of you need the, the it is the no like and trust factor it is where the, you know we call it the klt uh, factor okay you are going to know like and trust they're going to know like and trust you all right so we already kind of covered a little bit about the likability thing i don't think that needs to be uh, hit again uh, it, that can be overdone but for people to know you and to know what you feel and to know what you are like and whatever there's some very powerful things that can happen when you begin to kind of share your heart and as you share then they share 
And all of this is just powerful, powerful stuff. The idea of for them to, to know you, they need to know you, and then they begin to trust you. They trust you as you're steering the ship. They, You are their master in a sense, and I'm not talking about the dictator master, but the mastery. In other words, they, they, you, they respect you because they see where you're going with your life and your devotions and your family and your children and your preaching and all that. And they're like, wow, I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow that person. This is so important. And the tip I have for you on this, okay, this is probably just a starter one to kind of get you going. But and it's something that you can do uh, with your smartphone. But learn to text and and communicate on your phone a little bit better. Now, some of you don't text very good. Some of you don't talk on the phone very good. Some of you don't tweet very good or whatever. Um, I'm not into all those different things. But I have learned to touch base with people through my phone regularly. And it's just like, hey, how you doing? I'm praying for you. In fact, just before this was, uh, we started this, a pastor uh, said he's on the way to the hospital with his dad. He thinks his dad might have had like a little mini stroke of some sort. Okay, when this podcast is over, when I'm done with all this microphone and computer screens and all this stuff and doing all this recording, I shut everything down. The first text that's going out, it's like, how are you? You know, what is going on? Okay, how's your dad? How are you doing? You know, anything I can do? And I'm, I'm hours away from this guy, so there's really not much I can do. But I already let him know I'd be praying for him. But this is the idea of staying in touch with people, little tidbits of being in touch. You need to know about the state of your flocks and where they are. If people are out of town on vacation, if they were gone, if they're doing this or doing that. I had a family traveling yesterday. They're going across Kansas. I just said, hey, wave when you go through this town because that's where I went to college. Okay, that's all I said. A little bit later, they said, hey, we just waved as we went through that town. You know, I mean, but just a little kind of a touch there. You can do that. The peopleization, okay, as you start to peopleize more, okay, that is good. This is where you can stay in touch with people and be concerned about people. And after church and before a service, make sure you have everything else done so that you can talk and connect with your people. Make sure you schedule enough things that are slow and, 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 and where you just get to hang out. We have a Tuesday night small group that I run here. It's one of my absolute most favorite things to do is to, is to run a small group and teach people how to have daily devotions. And uh, I just love doing it. And so we've been doing it now. And we are on Tuesday night, this last Tuesday night, we were going to have a big campfire service and have everybody out. We're going to cook a bunch of hot dogs and brats and everyone's bringing little goodies, you know, and then we're going to sit and eat and talk about the Bible out there around the campfire. Well, we had to postpone it because the wind was blowing like 60 miles an hour and we would have uh, burned, uh, burned the whole town to the ground, okay, which would, I, I want to leave my mark on this community, but not that way. Um, so we postponed it. It is coming up. It is tomorrow night. And I can't wait because I have everything done and I just get to sit and talk to people till the cows go home, as they say. Just spend time with people and work on that. And as you do that, that becomes part of your environment, that you are an open church, you're a friendly church, you're a loving church, you're a forgiving church, you are a, an accepting church, all of that. And no matter who walks in the door and what they look like and all that kind of stuff, just love on them. Just be friendly to them. Just be as kind as you possibly can be. Now, all of this is the reason that people will vote for you. Okay, they're going to vote for your church. And what I mean is vote with their feet. Okay, not running away, but they're going to be coming in. Okay, and we want it to be what we call a fertile landing ground where people would 
boom. And it would be like the soil. They would land here and they would grow and they would mature and they would put their roots down in there. It wouldn't be like, you know, hard pan where the seeds bounce off and, and go far away, but you would have that preparation environment and you do everything you can to make it a nurturing environment. People land and they want to volunteer. They want to give. They want to give their life. They want their children to be there. They want their neighbors and friends to be there. This is what this is really all about. And it is the environment stupid, okay? It really is what it's all about. That's going to be, you got to be good with your Bible and good with feeding the flock and all that. That's a part of it. But when we have new people coming in, they're going to come in, they're going to stay because of what we just talked about. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If it is, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And when you subscribe, what you are doing, uh, if you've never subscribed, is you, then you are going to, It's however Google does its magic stuff, okay? I think you can get, hit the notification bell that's on there as well. And then you'll get notified when there's a new uh, one of these things. But this is the kind of stuff that we need to work on and focus on. This kind of stuff has been so encouraging to me. I have other pastors, other podcasts, other things I listen to, and I get, you know, charged up and rallied up because I'm learning good stuff. Can you watch way too much news? Yeah. Can you watch too much sports? Yeah. All of those things can happen, but we need to encourage one another. And if you subscribe or if you share this with somebody else, that would be super blessing to me, and it's just going to help them, and we're going to do everything we can to advance the kingdom of God. So anyway, this is Mike at the Reach Keep Podcast, and I'm so glad that you're here. Again, thanks for hitting the buttons and subscribing and all that stuff. Make sure you go back and go to those ones that we talked about, um, the avoiding the, the non-vibrant church, uh, avoiding, <laughs> say it right, avoiding the non-vibrant church, the interview uh, with brother eric and uh what's the other one here um okay uh the unprepared church that's the one of the practical stuff where we summarized everything on the interview uh into one short uh, simple thing so anyway love you guys so grateful to have you as friends if you're interested and need some help with the coaching calendar coach any of those type of things info at reachkeep.com shoot me a note and I'll send you a link and we'll set up a phone call and, you know, no charge kind of a thing. We'll just talk, okay? If I can help you, I want to do that. That's my heartbeat, creating flourishing churches. I'm here for you. So God bless. This is Mike at the, almost said it, the Better Sundays podcast. That's the other one. At the Reach Keep podcast. And God bless. We'll see you next time.